God has eyes was uh, is a, is a morally. Do you think that the notion that God has eyes is is morally powerful or morally insignificant or morally deleterious in the way most people will lead their lives? No, I think that for the most part, it could be it could be that that kind of a belief can be useful uh, in in uh, controlling people's uh, tendencies to engage in antisocial behavior. Uh, and that's where it often functions in traditional uh, religions, uh, that God is aware of what you're doing and, and therefore you better be careful uh, not to sin or commit a crime or whatever. Um, so that's a functional. It, has a, it could serve that function, uh, but that doesn't make it necessarily a convincing, that's not a convincing case for the truth of that Affirmation. Absolutely. There's not any evidence for it. Let's put it that way. I mean, if one looks at the, I don't see. I see many people. I mean, it's not me. The Book of Job. So many people who uh, who are, you know, God doesn't seem to be uh, punishing the wicked and uh, rewarding the righteous. If anything, it could often be the reverse. So I don't think that there's any empirical evidence for there being such a kind of a God. But if people do internalize that belief, and if they also have a certain moral code which they, or a legal code or a combination of both with, which they attribute to such a God, then that would be a factor, not the only factor, in why they would behave in certain ways that are in accordance with that moral or religious code. Now, I have to say also, in some religions, that moral or religious code uh, is to me, and to many other people, unethical or immoral in certain of its aspects. So, but, but I do agree that that kind of a belief can function as a force in influencing the way people behave. Just a fact that the belief uh, can function that way. Do you believe in right and wrong? Uh, I believe in right and wrong. Of course I believe in right and wrong. Now the next question would really be, how do I know what's right and how do I know what's wrong? Correct. If I don't believe in a revealed, let's say, Torah or Quran or New Testament. And I would say that my, uh, I, again, I'm not a philosopher by training. So my answers are probably philosophically simplistic. But I can only right. answer you <laughs> to the best of my knowledge and ability. Um, so uh, I think a lot of our sense of right and wrong uh, does come from religious traditions, but not exclusively from religious traditions. I think there's a whole literature now, a burgeoning literature from the field of uh, evolutionary psychology, evolutionary biology, uh, in which the, the, there are a strong case made that certain of what we'll call our notions of what's moral or what's right or what's good, what's virtuous, uh, have survival value, and they have evolved uh, in response to dealing with, the, you know, our, our both our natural and our social environment. So there are biological roots to uh, certain aspects of morality. There are clearly socio-cultural roots uh, to it. Uh, there are very pragmatic reasons why uh, we have to be socialized, that certain things are right and certain things are wrong, otherwise society would be anarchic and chaotic. Um, so our notions of right and wrong come from multiplicity of sources. I don't think they come from a God who revealed in a particular book to a select group of individuals what is right or what is wrong. Would you agree, though, that without a transcendent source of morality, or we have our opinions on morality? Look, uh, could you? Uh, I didn't get yeah, I can. Yeah. So, so unless there's a transcendent source that is above me and above Hitler, um, Hitler would say that. I can't help using Hitler. We all use Hitler for these types of things. Um, Hitler says murdering Jews is right. I say it's wrong. You say it's wrong. 99.9% .9 of humanity say say it's wrong, but uh, it's still just uh, individuals arguing. There's no transcendent source that we can point to to determine the argument. So it's it's just opinion without a transcendent source that would trump my opinion and trump Hitler's opinion. Uh, I might have to agree with that. If I don't believe that there's a, a, a transcendent revelation, then I would have to agree that they have the other uh, groundings for a Marvel code and not the appeal to the transcendent. And, and again, different religions have uh, different notions of what the transcendent wants. And uh, these are often incompatible with each other. So which view of the transcendent is the one that you would uh, favor? I, 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 so I'm, I just rather 
make the case or the argument based upon, again, my rational understanding of reality, my experience, my, just my general knowledge of society and history, is that uh, we don't know, I mean, even if there is a transcendent being, we don't know what that transcendent being wants from us because he hasn't revealed it to us. We have to make do with whatever we have as human beings to come up with a moral and ethical code that will allow us to function um, in a way that uh, leads to happiness, to the minimization of suffering in the world, um, to things that generally are considered virtues across many different religious and secular cultures. Um, I'm assuming for the sake of discussion that you believe that uh, same-sex uh, love and marriage and same-sex sex is okay. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay for as long as the people who engage in it are adults, are consent, yeah, adults who are not in any way harming anybody. Right. Yeah. How do you, how that's do you, a marriage? See, marriage is a legal term. So I, right, I mean, right. I, yeah, didn't, I don't know if it is yeah, marriage. Unions or partnership. Yeah, no, maybe right. even marriage too, but that's another question, which, again, I'm not an expert on, you know, the definition of marriage. And yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah but I maybe, just use yeah, the example right. of love and yes. expressions of love. Yeah, sure. So, uh, just as an example, uh, because someone who is uh, a believer in the, the divinity of the Torah and the, the, the authority of the Orthodox tradition um, would disagree with, would have to disagree with you there if they were to be authentic to their tradition. So <clears throat> I'm curious, I'm just using this as an example to try to tease out how you determine right and wrong. How, how, how do you come to the notion that, that same-sex sex is okay between consenting adults? Again, I'm going to have to flip the question. I'm not trying to be, you know... Uh, That's fine. Okay, the but, I mean, the question is, uh, why shouldn't it be? <laughs> if two people uh, love each other and they want to go to bed together and they're not harming anyone, why should I think that it's wrong? What is it different than a male and a female doing the same thing? Mm -hmm. So, how do you determine right and wrong? You use your your rational faculties, and and what else? Well, I, I use my rational faculties. I use uh, the way in which I was socialized by the culture, and I'm a, I'm a product of multiple cultures. Uh, a lot of which seem to be, you know, reasonable in terms of gauging how society should operate uh, in, in a constructive, productive way. And uh, as I say also, I'm, I'm a product of evolution like everybody else is, and I'm sure that there are certain uh, mechanisms that evolved in me which lead me to uh, consider certain kinds of activities, uh, feelings, positive and others to be negative. Again, I haven't. I have to be honest. Uh, my book is not um, making any kind of claim that I'm not even dealing with the issue of uh, you know the origins or sources of morality. These are very important philosophical questions addressed by people in the field of moral philosophy and theologians as well. Uh, I'm not at all an expert in that. That's not what my book is primarily about. Uh, but obviously, I do have certain assumptions about values and um, address them in the book to some extent. But um, um, as I said, I, I, I can't uh, I have to go and, you know, uh, write another book to try to clarify what of my own sources of morality and right and wrong. And um, I'm being just upfront uh, and honest with you. That's yes, what yes, yes, no, I think no, right no. now, you know. Uh, I just, I just, what I'm concerned about is where people make the claim that they know what God wants because it says so in their holy books and therefore not only do they want to live by that but they want they, they feel that they want others to live by that and they condemn others who don't live by that as being sinners have the right to think and feel that way if they want I take I take uh, umbrage of that uh, and I try to argue and demonstrate that their commitment to those kinds of beliefs are fundamentally implausible and that there are strong psychological mechanisms why they retain those beliefs, even when there's so much strong counter-argument and evidence against those beliefs. That's where the moral issue comes in in my book, basically. And also in the last chapter of the book, I do approach a question which I hope to address in a sequel to the book. Uh, when is it appropriate or when is it even... Uh,